Hi Fraggle friends, in this video I'll share with you all sorts of useful and practical information around the FIFA World Cup in Qatar 2022. I'll tell you what things you can do before or after the matches, how to get around and get your transport, how to check the latest COVID regulations, what the weather would be like around the World Cup timings, and even things about getting an alcoholic drink here in Qatar. If there's anything I haven't covered, just leave me a comment down below and let's get started straight away. Well, that's actually a really good point. If you're celebrating here the way you are used to back home, are you gonna run yourself into any kind of trouble? Well, the solution for that is that there will be fan zones established in specific areas. Most of those will be near the stadiums and possibly in some other areas as well. Within those fan zones, you should be able to celebrate the way you're used to back home as well, without running into any kind of trouble or offending anyone. How that's gonna work out in practice, I would love to see, of course, and I'm sure we're gonna find out very soon. Let's just hope we're all gonna have a great time celebrating here in Qatar. Yes, some of you have already asked me how the transport will work around the World Cup time in Qatar. The good thing is that Qatar has been busy building the Doha Metro, a metro system that is built specifically for the World Cup. Using the Doha Metro, it will be quite easy to get to any of the stadiums because most of them have their own dedicated metro station on the line. The only exceptions to that are the Al Wakra Stadium here behind me and the Al Bayt Stadium as well. But for those, there will be bus services. Of course, there is also the local taxi company called Karwa and Uber is available in Qatar too. The best way to know about the specific arrangements to get to any of the stadiums for the matches will be to keep an eye on the official social media accounts. Of course, I have all the important ones linked down below the video for you. The tickets for the World Cup matches, of course, are being sold far in advance of the World Cup itself. But it is important to understand how the system actually works. To attend a match, you will not only need a match ticket, but you will also need a Haya card, with kind of like a fan ID. To get this hire card, you have to register in advance and then you can have the actual pass or you can download the pass on an app which is called the Haya Card app on your mobile phone. And then the Haya Card or the Fan ID will be useful for a few different things at once. The Haya Card serves as kind of like a visa to enter the country of Qatar. The Haya Card will also give you free access to any of the metro, bus and tram services around the country on match days. And you will have to show your Haya Card along with your uh, match ticket to enter the stadium on a match day. Of course you will want to know whether there are any COVID restrictions before you are traveling to Qatar or even when you are within the country already. The latest thing around COVID is that face masks have just been reintroduced again for indoor spaces only. But that might well change again before the World Cup starts of course. The latest regulations on COVID within Qatar are always available on their own website covid19.moph.gov.qa. So be sure to check that out before you travel here. At the moment, Qatar also requires everyone to have the COVID tracing app installed on their mobile phone. The COVID tracing app is called Ateras and it's probably a good idea to have it at least installed on your phone before you travel to the country. Then once you arrive, you'll be able to activate it with your visa number. At least that's how it goes normally. It might be that that requirement is changed just before the World Cup to facilitate the traveling of lots of fans to the country, of course. To keep an eye on the latest information, just look at some of the links down below the video. Very good question as well. Luckily in November, December, when the World Cup will take place, normally the weather is really pleasant. Not like it is now in July with temperatures approaching 40 and super high humidity as well. The maximum daytime temperature is around 30 degrees Celsius around November, December, and at night it will be roughly about 20 degrees. There is even a chance of the odd day with some rain, which is of course really welcomed by people living in Qatar year round. There are quite a few nice places to visit in Qatar when you are here around the World Cup time. Some examples are the Doha Corniche, where you can also take a boat tour to admire the skyline from the water, Souk Wakif, the National Museum, the Mia Park along with its museum as well, and probably Lucille with the impressive Qatar Towers Hotel. If you want any more information or have a little preview of what these things look like, just check out some of my other videos. I'll link them down below or just browse through my channel page. Yes, of course, conservative dress is really appreciated by the locals. Some government buildings and some malls are really very strict about this and others not so much. This means for men and women, you would just have your shoulders covered and your knees covered as well. 
personally I have difficulty coping with the heat so I normally go around in my shorts to be honest and I've only had a problem with that once or twice in the past 12 years or so. Yeah I think that's a really useful point as well, public displays of affection. To be honest I've lived here for 12 years now and I've only heard one or two stories about people getting in trouble for public displays of affection. So like a hug or a kiss in public might not be the best idea. So luckily this is pretty rare, but it's probably a good idea to keep in mind that it's not normal within the culture here to have a nice snug or a cuddle in public places around here. Of course when celebrating, some of us like to have a little drink on the side, right? So alcohol is definitely available within Qatar as well, of course. Uh, the locals can get their hands on some alcohol with an alcohol license and that allows them access to an exclusive shop to buy their drinks. Alcohol is also available in most of the hotels. For the World Cup I haven't found any definitive information but it seems likely that alcohol is going to be available in the fan zones that are going to be established near the stadiums and maybe some other places as well. One thing with that to keep in mind though is that one bottle of alcohol in a hotel can easily cost about 50 Qatar rials which is the same as like 14 US dollars. What exactly the prices of alcohol will be during the World Cup here in Qatar I'm not sure but of course we're going to find out pretty soon. If you're looking to get some food delivered in Qatar, the app Talabad is probably a really good option and most large and small restaurants are featured on the app. Ordering on Talabad is pretty easy after you've registered with your details of course. Just keep in mind that delivery times can be a little bit excessive, sometimes up to like an hour and maybe even more during the World Cup. Other apps that you can use for ordering food as well to be delivered are Carriage and Snoodoo. And then last but not least, have a look at some of my other videos about Qatar. If you're into architecture, check out my video on the top 10 architecture in Qatar. If you like to visit some parks, there's a video about that too. Or if you prefer to visit the beach, check those out as well. I'll link them on the screen or otherwise you'll find them in the description below the video. Do you still have more questions that you'd like me to answer for the World Cup in Qatar in 2022? Be sure to write them in the comments down below and I'll definitely get back to you. Of course there is Patreon as well if you want to show me some support. Thanks very much for watching. If you subscribe then you'll see me soon in the next video. Take care. Bye.